I didn't get it if it's recorded or not. Okay. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, now we are going to talk about drugs acting on interior pituitary gland even more, okay? And today our major focus will be on gonadotropin, all right? I tried to uh, squeeze TSH and ACTH also in today's lecture, but I think uh, we should talk about gonadotropins today. Uh, because it's again just like growth hormone, it's also a class of hormone which I think needs attention. All right, <clears throat> so uh, reduce this thing. Wait a minute, let me reduce this thing because earlier I was planning to cover it all in one class only, but no, I changed my mind. We'll do it in here only. All right, okay. So today we will talk about gonadotropins and when we talk about gonadotropin, uh, the hormone which we have to talk about is luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, human menopausal gonadotropin, which is also called minotropin, and HCG, which is very famous among the ladies who are either pregnant or who are about to get pregnant or who are inspiring, aspiring to get pregnant. So, uh, all right, so HCG, which is human chorionic uh, gonadotropin, all right? Okay, so uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, LH and FSH. What is it, what do, what do they do? So uh, this is one very funny image, which I show it to almost all of my students, and we have good laugh about it. Uh, because you see, wait a minute, let me grab the pointer. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hmm. Okay, beta. You see here, the pituitary is actually releasing FSH. Okay, and you see this follicle. Okay, now it's becoming the graphene follicle, and it's getting bigger in size. So whenever I say follicle stimulating hormone, so just have a picture stored in your mind somewhere. Okay, that this follicle was big, uh, changed into graphene follicle. Okay, so it's becoming bigger in size. All right, so you see as soon as it gets, it gets bigger, at the same time estrogen levels uh, shoot and then LH comes into the play, okay? And LH, as you can easily see what it's doing, it's actually smacking the graphene follicle and uh, the egg is being released, okay? So basically, yes, this is the function of LH. It does not actually smack, but you know, it makes the egg evolution happen, okay? And uh, yeah, this is responsible for it. So right now we are focusing on FSH, how to make it work faster and better. And also we are going to talk about LH, that how to ensure that evolution is happening, okay? Now, uh, the structure, first of all, LH and FSH are glycoproteins found in anterior pituitary. FSH, LH, TSH are all composed of an identical Alpha subunit and beta subunit unique to each hormone. Alpha subunit and beta subunit, I am sure you know about in chemistry. What are they, how they are formed and all. Okay. Uh, actions and pharmacological properties. So the activity of LH and FSH is mediated by specific membrane receptors. Okay. That causes an increase in intracellular CAMP. I have... Uh, one is uh, one entire playlist dedicated to receptors only. Okay, I want you all today to go and watch those receptors. I want you all to Google LH and FSH mechanism of action. Okay, and I want you to know what is the mechanism by which intracellular uh, uh, CMP is actually getting uh, increased. Okay. And I will talk about it in my next lecture. So in women, LH increases estrogen production in the ovary and is required for progesterone production by the corpus luteum after ovulation. So you see, let's go back here. Uh, once basically the ovule has released, okay, the egg is released. So this graphene follicle starts to uh, decompose, okay? And as a result, it becomes corpus luteum, okay? And 
this corpus luteum actually releases progesterone. Now the thing is this, that if, uh, uh, let's say, this egg gets fertilized, okay? So this progesterone, which is released, okay, it will develop the uterine wall, all right? And it will assist the, because of the thickened uterine wall, okay? It will assist the fertilized egg to, uh, you know, get embedded into the uterine wall, develop the villi and all that, okay? Implantation will happen, all right? So the thing is, the activity of LH and FSH is mediated. Okay, we've done it. All right, we were here. So LH increases estrogen production in the ovary and is required for progesterone production by the corpus luteum after ovulation. We know how it's done now. FSH is required for normal development and maturation of ovarian, or ovarian follicles. We know that already. In men, LH induces testosterone production by the interstitial uh, lydic uh, cells of the testis. All right. So FSH acts on the testis to stimulate spermatogenesis, which is production of sperm, and the synthesis of androgen binding proteins. Okay. So overall, it is promoting the process of male reproductive system. So therapeutic uses are FSH and LH of pituitary origin are not used pharmacologically, rather the menopausal and chronic gonadotropin described below are used in the, as a source of biologically active peptides. All right, now we'll talk about menotropins and HCG. Menotropins are, uh, okay, so menotropins and HCG, we are basically, uh, you know, those ladies use it who want to uh, become moms, okay? So these ladies use it. All right. So menotropins are, menotropins are isolated from the urine of post-menopausal women and contain a mixture of LH and FSH. Now, there is one more formulation, which is urofolytropin. Uh, it is immunologically purified FSH from the urine of pregnant woman. All right. So first of all, they're talking about how exactly we can isolate these LH and FSH. HCG is produced by placenta and it can be isolated and purified from the urine of pregnant woman. If you see those sticks, which women usually use in order to check if they have conceived or not, so they actually show the HCG result, all right? Okay, even when the, we have the blood test, so we usually get it checked, all right? So HCG is produced, uh, HCG is nearly identical in activity to LH, but differs in sequence and carbohydrate content. Recombinant human FSH. What is recombinant human FSH? You guys have to search and you guys have to tell me what does recombinant means i hope you are right now thinking of some uh, techniques some new uh, strategies where recombinant technology is being used so please search about it i want you to know about what does this uh, term recombinant means wait i have a message very good, Yusha. High five to you. Very good. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Yusha, don't share the answers with others, okay? <laughs> All right. So recombinant human FSH, this and this are available. They have less batch-to-batch -batch variability than preparation derived from the urine. Recombinant LH is also available. Uh, what is recombinant? Why it's so famous? Menotropin and HCG must be administered parenterally, all right? So basically, yes, those ladies who want to, uh, who, are, who, who are having trouble in becoming a mom, they actually get these injections, okay, of menotropin and HCG. And as a result, actually the uterus, uh, you, you will learn in the upcoming slides about this, all right? 
so therapeutic uses menotropins are used with hcg like i said they have uh, the injections there to stimulate ovulation in women okay so what do we mean by ovulation it means that more of the ovules are being secreted more of the eggs are being released all right so ovulation in women with functioning ovaries approximately 75% of women are treated with these peptides ovulate hcg can be used in both men and women to stimulate gonadal steroidogenesis in case of lh insufficiency why steroidal uh, why steroidogenesis um it means that these hormones are steroidal in nature theek hai all right so hcg can be used to induce external sexual maturation and spermatogenesis in men with secondary hypogonadism but this may require months of treatment in the absence of an anatomic block hcg can also promote the descent of testes in uh cryptorchidism so what is cryptorchidism it is actually this that you see when a human baby is being developed okay uh, let's say the baby is a boy which is being developed okay and uh, the baby is in the process of developing okay so first of all in the initial days the testes are actually in the abdomen region and then afterwards when the baby is about to born and all okay then the, the testes actually go towards the scrotum and all okay so cryptocord uh, 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 wait a minute i have messages from you guys wait a minute let me see okay fine erid all right no problem okay beta uh so i was saying that you see here the babies uh, will actually have one um, uh, one of the testes would not be there okay so uh, this hcg will actually help it from the abdomen to get into the scrotum okay all right so adverse effect and contraindication menotropin and hcg cause ovarian enlargement in about 20% of treated women yes of course it will hyperactivate the ovaries it will uh, you know uh, enhance evolution it will enhance follicle production so definitely It, the ovaries will be enlarged as a compensatory mechanism as a, as a response of this all right so menotropins and hcg may cause ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome okay and up to 1% of patients resulting in acute respiratory distress ascites hypovolemia and shock now what is ascites this is like i don't like this thing basically uh, you know in the peritoneal in the peritoneum cavity uh, fluid is being accumulated sometimes even up to 1 liter and that's how the distended kind of you know uh, uh, abdomen would look like and this is actually because of the reason that uh, these hormones are hyperactivated okay all right and then hypovolemia volemia I have actually placed this chart for you guys because hypovolemia uh, volemia, volemia can actually be confused very easily with dehydration all right so basically because you see when i say the cells don't have enough water so you will obviously think that uh, the cell don't have enough water because it does not have uh, like the person is not drinking water so no this is not hypovolemia all right so first of all let's read about dehydration dehydration is water loss alone and it is termed as dehydration all right but when we talk about hypovolemia so here the ecf all right the extracellular fluid volume is reduced results in decreased tissue perfusion it can be produced by salt and water loss electrolyte imbalance you can say salt and water loss comes from ecf all right so there is a very minute difference in it that hypovolemia is at, when we talk about dehydration 
so it is always because of hypernatremia you see one of the ions one of the minerals are are massively there in the body and because of which dehydration is there okay however overall uh, in hypovolemia you see you have salt and water loss all right and everything is getting reduced and that's why your ecs will get reduced thank you so much everybody take care